remember when I was young and so were you and time stood still Remember when we vowed the vows and walked the walk and gave our hearts made the start and it was hard we lived and learned life through curves there was joy there was hurt remember when remember when old ones died and new were born and life was changed Disassembled, rearranged We came together, fell apart And broke each other's hearts Remember when The pattern for that momentous 1956-57 season was set from the start when a crowd of 7,500 saw Wickham demolish a Uganda touring side 10-1. Sir Stanley Rouse, Secretary of the FA and later FIFA President, was guest of honour at Lokes Park and predicted everyone had just seen the possible Amateur Cup finalists in action. He was proved exactly right. Wickham had just won their first Isthmian League title and would go on to retain that. But it was the Cup run that grabbed the imagination. Huge crowds watching as St Albans, Clapton and Hounslow were dispatched by a team that included a furniture worker, a butcher, an accounts clerk, a trainee solicitor and a couple of builders. After that early cruise through, Ilford proved a little more difficult in round four, the Wanderers needing a replay in front of 15,500 before clinching their semi-final spot. That match at Highbury attracted nearly 30,000, half of them travelling from Bucks. They witnessed a thriller against Corinthian casuals. Wickham captain Frank Wesley was reduced to a hobbling passenger, Frank Smith dislocated a shoulder and goalkeeper Dennis Syrett was badly injured colliding with a post. But two goals from Paul Bates and two from the Chalfont wonder Len Worley, including a rare one from his head, saw the Wanderers through to their second Amateur Cup final and their first for 26 years. Remember when I think our finest moment that year was at the semi-final when we beat Casuals 4-2 at Highbury and uh, I remember we had I think about eight fit men on that day and uh, I also remember 25,000 people there and the following Monday the whole of the News Chronicle, as it was then, devoted its back page to that match, which is unheard of in these days. Uh, we're almost invincible, I think, as a club. Uh, we, we might not have had the best players of everyone, but it was going back to this team spirit, I think. Some fine players who pulled for everyone else. Basically, we all got together and uh, it was because of the friendships we developed then, which we've still got now. We did have a good side. We. We tried to play attractive football, we were encouraged to do this. I think we had a great manager and a great coach in Sid Can. Um, and uh, if you did what he told you, you didn't go far wrong. I think he was, I think he was tremendous as a coach. Yeah, I was with the Wanderers for 10 years, and 10 really, I suppose, are the happiest years of my life. And um, all right, so I missed the Wembley final, but um, I still enjoyed my 10 years of soccer with the Wanderers. And I think, again, that a lot of that is attributed to, all right, he's been referred to as the Dar Devonian, a gentleman by the name of Sid Can, who, if you think, my colleagues, we stopped playing seriously in 1960. Here we are now, still in touch with one another and still very happy to meet, and especially on occasions such as today. Jimmy Nibbins, the Bishop Auckland skipper, wins the toss in the Amateur Cup final at Wembley against Wickham Wanderers. The Wanderers have a tough problem on their hands, for the white-shirted Bishop Auckland have won the last two finals and their hearts are set on the hat-trick. Wickham's first attack is soon halted and the Bishops are on the move. Hardesty to Billy Russell and the Bishops are winner! Bishops attacking again down the right wing. 
double attempt in the Wanderer's goal mouth, but the danger is averted. Now the Wanderers start hitting back, and after a tussle with the Bishop's defence, Frank Smith bangs home the equaliser. Pressure on the Bishop's goal again, but goalie Harry Sharrett manages to battle through. Now to the Bishop's right wing, Warren Bradley runs in and shoots, and Derek Lewin scores. So it's 2-1 as the second half begins, and here are the Bishops taking a free kick. Hardest to heads, and now another goal, but Dennis Sarrett collects it safely. Wanderer is attacking again. Right half, Jeff Truett to inside left, Tomlin. Cliff Trot has it. He passes inside. Goalie Sharrett makes a spectacular dive. Trot tries again, but misses. And yet another Trot attack is beaten by Harry Sharrett. Robert Creswell shakes off Cliff Trot to start the Bishops moving again. A long one to Bob Hardesty, and it's a nasty moment for Wickham. But skipper Frank Wesley gets it away. Warren Bradley takes a corner. Jimmy Nimmins intercepts, Tomlin challenges him, and the ball goes loose. And Bradley's there to land a beauty. The whistle's gone and Bishop Auckland have made their hat-trick. Skipper Jimmy Nimmins receives the cup from the Lord Mayor of London. This is the tenth time they've taken the cup home. Wickham Wanderers made them fight hard to win, so their victory is thoroughly well earned. We didn't play very well at Wembley. I think one of the problems was that the semi-final was four weeks before. And that really was a great achievement there to win at Highbury against the Casuals, who were a fine side. And we were virtually down to nine fit men at the end of the game. And I think had we played the final the week after, we would have played a lot better. Whether we'd have beaten the Bishops or not, I don't know. I think we might have done, because I think their better side was two years before when we lost in the semi-final at Doncaster. But the four-week gap between the semi-final and the final, I think, really, we there was a sort of an anti-climax at the end of it. We, it went a bit flat, I suppose, and I don't think we played particularly well, but it was a, it was a great experience. Um, supporters pulled the coats through from Wickham Marsh through into the town. Wonderful support in those days, I and mean, they were marvellous other supporters. We used to get big crowds, and uh, it was a, a great thrill to walk through the town on a Saturday morning. I think the supporters uh, must take a lot of the credit for our success during the 50s. They were really wonderful, they really were. And like for the 1931 cup winning side, Wickham got a hero's welcome back in the town. Despite the actual Wembley result, those performances overall in the 1950s, and that season in particular, and those players a very special place in the club's history. They put the club on the map, and set the tone for everything that has happened since. We honoured them 50 years on, and a further decade on, we do so again. Their names will live on, as we remember when.